guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Con, or I say on, I think it's Con though, but it's probably the last time I'll say that because I don't want to butcher the name. Nevertheless, in the game, you're going to play for two to four players. It'll take about 60 to 90 minutes, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game, you're basically going to be trying to move around and place down machinery, and when you're placing down this machinery, you're trying to score points. You're also trying to gather contraptions, deal with things like parents sites on the board as well as large colossuses that move around the table trying to stomp you down. You're also going to want to pull out things like qualm and these shards that are going to give you special special powers and points and whatnot. It's an area control game with a little bit of tableau management and a small tech tree in which you're trying to go through the three years of play. At the end of the third year if you have the most points you're going to win in this crazy crazy game. Let me go ahead and show you down below everything you get in the game and then I'll show you basically how you can play your turns and how the years and cards work. After that, I'll give you my review. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So Khan is played in three rounds, and in each of the rounds, they're basically called years, you're going to be taking a certain number of turns for each player, depending on the number of cards in the stack here. Every year, you're going to take one of these Colossus cards that are placed in three separate areas. They're three different types of cards. You'll take the first year, and then you're going to add it to the deck, and you're going to shuffle it in along with the other five cards. Once all five of the locations Location cards have been placed out in these areas from one all the way to eight then that is going to signify the end of the year whether the Colossus pops out or not and every year obviously more Colossus cards will be added so there could be more movement for the Colossus or less just depending on the game additionally you're gonna get this board here and this board here this is going to have curio cards which every player is going to start with a certain amount and they're going to be used with these green qualm or crystals uh, to do certain things there's a cost on all of those cards and associated with the cost is something you get to do, whether it be movement or attack or some other specific thing like victory points. On this board here is a victory point tracker. It starts at zero and it goes all the way to 99, in which you're going to be scoring points throughout the game as well as at the end of the game for extra scoring bonuses. The person on the highest end of this track is the winner at the end of the game. There are four different characters to choose from, or at least in this prototype, and along with little bases to indicate the color of those players, you're going to set them down in spaces that are going to have attachments of uh, two two areas here. So each of these four spaces are choices that you can make to place your starting players. The Colossus is going to start with a certain number of these crystals here, depending on the number of players. In a two player it's two plus one, and in any other, other game it's equal to the number of players. They'll also start with placing little parasites out. These are actually Misthea golems, but we're going to be using them as parasites to this game. Otherwise you just see these little uh, card, these little uh, basically little squares. So yeah, these areas here are also spaces in which you're going to gain control of by placing down machines and getting points. And they're going to be colored based on green, pink, blue, yellow, and uh, that gray or white. I just put them there to symbolize the colors so you get a good idea of the spaces and their colors. They're a little hard to see on this prototype board, but once you get an idea of how to play the game and you start going through it, it's pretty simple which colors represent which ones. These are basically things you're going to be uh, injecting into your player board. You're going to gain them from the middle here, bring them back to their colored area, these craters, and then you're going to install them and they're going to give you some kind of victory points when you install and at the end of the game for bonus scoring. Uh, additionally, there's these extra little crystals that will be put in depending on the time in which you're placing them for this character here. And you're going to be pulling these out and utilizing them for certain things. I'll talk about that when I talk about all the qualm. Uh, you're also going to get additional parasites, a character card. So this is how you're going to choose your character randomly. You'll shuffle this deck here, draw a character card. That'll be your character used in the game, as well as one random passive card. When you have them both together, it will give you specific numbers for how many cards you get to start or how many cards you have in your, for, for a full hand size, how many passive abilities you can use for cards, because certain cards will actually stay out and play, and you'll be able to utilize them throughout the entire game. This character will get to use three of them with a hand size of five, and also the number of starting resources this player gets. So if this player was playing as yellow, he would get two gray and one of these brown qualm to start the game off with. Uh, you also are going to get a player board. Those are all the player boards over there, and that is the basic setup for the player boards. You're actually going to inject your character in this slot over here and the passive over in that slot right there, which is basically going to have a unique, different type of character every single time you play the game, which is kind of nice. Additionally, those are the three different types of machines. You're going to get harvesters, scavengers, and refiners. 
harvesters are going to harvest qualm from certain areas when you place them down and utilize a certain action. These scavengers are going to allow you to draw cards, and the refiners will actually turn minerals into wilds, which means you get to choose any qualm color that you would like when you're doing a certain action adjacent to spaces on the board. That's pretty much what you're going to get in the game other than the rule book and, of course, the box. And if you've ever seen Mistea, then you would know that it plays somewhat similar as far as how the rounds go. On your turn, you're also going to have a certain amount of movement, and you're going to basically be choosing to move and then taking an action. And the actions are going to range as quite a few things here. For instance, one action is you're going to be able to place down your, your machines from left to right, and you're going to select a space that is adjacent to you, and you're going to either spend the color appropriate to the space equal to the number of machines, or you can choose to just spend these brown uh, qualm in order to place. So for instance, if there was two machines here and you wanted to place a third one, which is the limit of each area, it would cost you two plus one to place, and you'll be able to place on your board either side from left to right. When you place down machines, that's going to open up passive abilities, whether it be something like strength for fighting parasites, whether it be additional movement when you spend blue qualm, or whether it be something like that little space there, which allows you to gain more qualm, because every time you take qualm, you're going to place it down on your board. Those spaces will remain filled unless you choose to remove them all for new um pulls or whether or not you are going to just spend them all until you have none and then you can go ahead and choose to do so. Additionally, there's other things you can do, like moving your character to a space that is adjacent to the Colossus and pulling out a crystal and then spending the pink qualm or crystals and it'll be based on the number of this little crystal here. It could be one, two, or three and as long as you have the amount you're going to gain victory points along with this thing here. At the end of the game if you have none of these it's minus 15 points. If you have at least one it's zero and for every additional one it's going to give you five in which you'd place over here on your side of the board. So there's a reason why you're going to want pink crystals. And we talked about these ones already which is based on building machines. Machines are also going to have something unique with them as well. Harvesters will let you harvest an additional so one of your actions is to harvest. So if I was right here, and let's say that I had, there was a crystal in each of these areas here, just as an example, uh, you can go ahead and choose to harvest. And harvest will let you get one crystal from each area, provided there's a crystal in each area. If you had a harvester in this area, and let's say that there was two here, instead of taking one from each area, you get one from each area plus one in addition to each harvest you have in each area. So I'll let you get both of these along with this and this on your action, and then you'd place them all in one of these little spaces right here. That's a full space now. You couldn't place more there until all of those were removed unless you chose to remove them all. Uh, the next thing is these scavengers here. If you were to harvest in an area where there's a, adjacent to a scavenger, that'll let you draw curio cards, and these curio cards are going to affect your green qualm. So in this one it says spend one green, and additionally it will give you three pink qualms. So one for three is this card, which is a pretty good deal. These are special actions. You can do one special action each turn, and this is going to give you uh, some kind of benefit, whether it be victory points, additional uh, movement, and uh, even spaces that'll let you place more qualm down. So there's certain things it's gonna do to help you throughout the game. The last machine is gonna be the refinery. If there is a crystal of one type there and you have a refinery on there, you'll be able to take another crystal of your choice uh, from that space. Another thing to note is when you're building your machine, so let's say we had machines here, and you want to build one here, you're going to gain victory points based on the number, based on the one you place, so the cost of placing, plus any adja additional adjacent machines of the same type, that will give you two bonus victory points as well. Uh, these white ones over here are going to affect the parasites, and as you move this dude around, which I'll explain th this whole thing in a second, uh, he's going to drop these guys here. If you're adjacent to para parasite spaces, you can spend a white cube and based on your spending of white cubes, based on your attack is how many parasites you can remove. So if you spend one white and your action is to remove one of these dudes here, you can get rid of as many of these guys as you can based on your strength for each white cube that you spend or each white qualm that you spend. The final one is blue over here and blue will let you move. Every time you spend one, it'll let you move either two or one it'll tell you over on your board based on how much you've unlocked in your tree, thusly letting you move across the board faster and farther, which is a very useful technique. And that's pretty much what you can do throughout the game. The last thing that you can do is you can go to the space
place over here. You can select to take one of these guys as an action. You can place it on your board on the far right hand side. And then once you get to the crater of its specific color, you can then spend an action to put it down on your board. And these will score you certain points, whether it be four points for each uh, scavenge you have, or four points or three points for each harvester, uh, five points for each crystal, so on and so forth. These things are going to score you once at the beginning when you place it down your board and once with, at the end of the game as long as it's installed. So it, it's very useful to go ahead and go back and forth with these. Uh, and I think that is it. So let's talk about now a single singular turn. You're going to take one of these cards here, you're going to flip it up, and then you're going to do what it says. In this case, it is going to ignore the back bottom space and it'll, it's a Colossus card. And it says it will move four spaces it will damage anybody that it goes next to. So it'll go one, it'll damage everybody in this area. It'll go two, it'll damage anybody in this area. Three and four, same thing. If a character is damaged, it'll fall over. And in order for it to get back up, you'll have to discard a Curio card. Otherwise, you're going to have to only do a, you can't do any special action on your turn when you get back up, you'll just be able to move in a basic action. So there's a cost to getting hit by this guy. And then it'll tell you a, a symbol. And that symbol here specifically says, you're gonna go ahead and place these parasites in adjacent regions. Then after that, everybody will take an action and, or, and move in an action. So for instance, if I was here, I could move my total movement speed. Additionally, if I wanna spin these cubes, I can. Then I could do an action, whether it be pulling one of these things, pulling out a stone and spinning that, using the brown crystals to place down machines in adjacent area or the color of that area or whether I want to fight adjacent parasites I can spend white and then of course my bonus action being the fact that I can go ahead and spend a green in order to play those curio cards um, and uh, there's also one additional thing. This little token here is going to be numbered first through fourth place. To start the game off, you're just going to go ahead and shuffle these and deal them out. But when you use these, it's going to give you the ability to draw a card, get bonus resources, or take an extra turn. And these reset after the fourth round. So they're very useful. Uh, then after everybody does that, they're going to go ahead, go ahead and flip over another card here. This is a mountainous train, which means that you're going to spawn three Quam in a mountainous area. And based on the number of players is how many of these Quam you can spawn. You'll take these guys out and you'll put three in each of the three different areas that are of that color And after that you will check to see if it does anything else This one says the Colossus will move once and then everybody will take their actions and rinse and repeat So on and so forth. It'll keep going and you'll keep doing things This one says three in each area of the specific type Additionally, you'll spawn more of that stuff You'll move this guy everybody will take their actions and it will keep going until eventually all five of the location cards have been played. When all five have been played, then every the round is going to basically wrap up. You're going to take an extra one of these for the year two Colossus card. You're going to take this deck here. You're going to shuffle it up. After the fourth round, don't forget to re redo your thing, as well as whoever has the most points in the game is going to be the one that is actually going to... Uh, get the last place, and whoever has the least amount of points is gonna go first. So least to greatest amount of points will be turn order, which is how you move these things around. Start again with year two, then go to year three, and that will finish the game off. There's a couple of specific things for bonus points in the game, and that's gonna depend on something like these things here, whether or not you've played your cards, so on and so forth. The person with the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the game, and that's basically how you play it. Hopefully it gave you a good understanding of what you can do in this game. I know it sounds a little complex, but it's actually not so bad once you get the feel of it. If you've played Mistea before, you've probably got a good idea of how this is game is played. Let's come up and I'll give you my review. All right, so a couple caveats for the game. I mentioned everything I think correctly, minus one or two things. The first thing is on this board here, on this side of the tech tree is going to be those refiners. And when you place them down, you're gonna get an instant bonus in addition to what I was talking about before. But uh, the bonus is you get to flip over your uh, your crystal thing here, which lets you take another turn or draw a card or gain bonus uh, qualm. In addition, it'll give you victory points or it'll give you something else for each of these eight things here. Now, what I said before was that you take a while, but that's actually for a curio card. What in fact it is, is when you pull a cube or a qualm from a space with the refinery, you're gonna get bonus victory points every time you do that. And that's how they basically function. Um, there's also an interesting little aspect of the game was when you pull these shards out of the Colossus. Of course, you wanna get at least one so you don't get that negative 15, but the more you get, the more you can turn your uh, apparatuses into bonus points at the end of the game. Cause you're gonna score once you pull them and you score at the end of the game for each one of these things you have. You can place it on one of these at the end of the game and 
it'll score you again. It'll say, okay, for each of your uh, harvesters, it's going to give you three points. So if you have all three harvesters out, that's another nine points, provided you have one of these to place on it. And you can place one on each of them, in addition to the scoring points you get for that. And that's pretty much it. I think that you got a pretty good idea of the game. I think you can actually probably play it uh, almost entirely. The last thing is, at the end of every year, the people who destroy the parasites are going to score victory points, and the more you kill, the more points you get. There's a first and a second and a third place, I think. Depending on if it's a two, three, or a four player game, it kind of changes, but you score points for destroying parasites. And then the last thing with parasites is, if you have parasites equal to the number of machines in a location, then the machines do not work. And if you have more parasites than the number of machines in the location, those machines break. So you want to make sure you're just dealing with the parasites as much as you can, as they're slowly going to overwhelm the board if you do not. They're not a huge problem until they are, right? Anyway, let's talk about my review now. I think I've given you pretty much the entire go for the game. This game is excellent. It is excellent, excellent. I like Miss Thea. I like this one even more. This game is probably right now in my top two or three games of the year. I just really like it because there's not a huge amount of things that happen in the game. You're simply going to be drawing one of these cards, placing it down in an area, moving the Colossus, and then adding crystals to the board. That's the main aspect of all these cards. You don't know when the year is going to end, though, so you're taking a risk every, every year by not doing certain things and holding off on doing them because you may or may not have a chance to do so. Everyone's then going to get to move, do an action, special action. There's only like four or five actions in the game. You can pull from the Colossus, you can pull from the middle, you can gather resources, you can attack the, the bad dudes, and uh, I think that's pretty much about it. Those are, the, those are the things you can do in the game. But based on those choices, there's a lot of different things that go on. And then, of course, utilizing the Curio cards to be able to spend certain resources based on what you have and how you utilize those spaces is going to make a huge difference. Additionally, you have to be careful of the Colossus. It's going to move around the board, and as it moves around the board, it's going to try and stomp on you, and you losing special actions and whatnot is a big deal. Losing curio cards is a big deal as well. There's a maximum hand size, and you want to try and hold on to that max to be able to use the cards when you need to. Certain times are going to be better to use certain things than others. How you place your machines matters, especially in a multiplayer game. You're going to try and score as many benefits and bonus points as possible, as well as using those machines to your advantage, whether it be to draw cards or gain more qualm, or just to gain bonus victory points by placing down those refineries. Uh, the parasites, like I said before, the parasites overrun you. If you do not deal with them, eventually they're going to be a problem. They're never really a problem the first year, but then slowly the second year they become more of an issue, and then even the third year you're like, oh wow, I wish somebody would deal with them. Especially because you get bonus points every year for doing so. You want to be hitting those guys down. The apparatuses. Yeah, you can go ahead and grab them from the middle of the board and bring them back to the location or the crater of that same color. And if you do that, you're going to be benefiting yourself once and then twice as long as you have that additional crystal that you pulled from the Colossus at the end of the game. And nine points can make all the difference in this game. But you're limiting yourself by reducing yourself by two turns just to do that. And in a game where you're going to either have anywhere from five to eight different turns per year... You have to be very careful how you want to pull that off. And you can only have one of each type of apparatus and a total of three of them. So, you know, a total of six turns you can kind of use to do that. But it limits you. So you always want to do certain things. You only have enough time to do... Uh, uh, you only have enough time to do certain things and not everything that you want to do. And that works for everybody. Uh, there's also character cards in the game. And what's cool is, yeah, there's four different characters, but then you have four different uh, passives that can be switched around. So every single one of these guys can have four different concoctions, which leads up to, like what, uh, 32 different types of ways to play the game based on just the four characters. And the different curio cards that give you, give you bonuses, whether they be fighting or moving or whatnot, does play into how the character feels. Do you want to be moving faster? Or would you rather gain more additional bonus points at the end of the game? So, like, for instance, uh, this guy here, he's going to gain bonus victory points as long as you do certain things, whereas maybe uh, this character here is going to be able to, able to fly around the board once every year. So you have a lot more movement compared to victory points. Do you want to gain additional victory points, or do you want to have a free movement? It's up to you, um, or you get to play the hand you're dealt. You know, it's kind of uh, how, how, however you want to set that up, I suppose. Uh, it's fun. I love the quality of the artwork. If you like Miss Say, if you like the quality of that game, which it is tremendously good. They did a great job. Their art book is amazing. These little characters here, ones I was showing you as the parasites, are from that game. All the miniatures in that game are excellent. All the story in that game is excellent. This game has an excellent story as well. I would strongly suggest you take a look at the story of this game if you like the story of Miss Thea. 
artwork component quality is great. The miniatures are beautiful. You can you can easily see the detail in just this prototype miniature. I do not want to give this back. I want this. That's how cool this thing is. I want to paint this. Most of you painters out there are going to want to paint these miniatures. The player boards, the tech trees, the mechanics, excellent. Everything is simple as to what you can do, but complex in the fact that you want to do everything, but you have to choose, and every turn it makes such a big difference. I feel the weight of this game every single time I play it. There's always this weight on me going, you, you can only do one of these three things that you want to do. And what's really great about this game is, like I said, being able to want to do everything. It's not like there's a best move for you. Sometimes there may be an apparent best move, and then you realize two turns later that it wasn't because you messed up based on the fact that you didn't realize there was an extra Colossus card, and now he smushed you. You get what I'm saying. Overall, this is an excellent game. This gets my seal of approval, seal of excellence. I really, really like this game. It's probably gonna stay in my top five this year. It's gonna be really hard to, to knock this one down. Really, really enjoyed it. Tabula Games, you did an excellent job in this game. I'm very, very impressed. And I think you guys out there should back this game. Really, back this game, it's good.